Ooh, that looks nasty. What happened? Well, Mr. Grumbles and I were playing in the park, and I fell over and he stamped on my wrist. What? You were playing with Chris without me? Yeah, we quite often do that. What's the big deal? Come back here. Well, I'm glad you hurt yourself. I'm not surprised, you know. Now, look, give me a hammer this bandage. Yeah, I've got a better idea. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Well, haven't you heard? Laughter's meant to be really good for people with pain. <laughs> But that is not how it works. Sounds like a case for investigation, ouch. <laughs> <laughs> laughter is something we all do. This lot are all part of a laughter club. <laughs> they get together once a week to really just do one thing and one thing only, and that is laugh their heads off. And there are scientists who believe there are significant medical benefits from this kind of laughter. Meet Robin Dunbar, a professor of evolutionary psychology. He's very serious about laughter. Robin, what have you discovered about laughter? When you laugh, the brain is flooded with endorphins. So endorphins are chemicals that make us feel good, is that right? Yes, it helps suppress pain. Can we test this? Oh, we can test that absolutely, yes, and I have just the plan. So in order to see Professor Robin's theory in action, I'm going to need a couple of things. First of all, 14 experimental guinea pigs. Well, hello. hello! And secondly, a stand-up comedian. That's handy. We're going to try and prove that when you laugh, you can take more pain. Are you ready? Yes! Here we go. Three, two, one, go! Stage one, pain. Our guinea pigs have to sit in a chair position against the wall until their legs hurt so much they can't take the pain anymore. You can try this at home. It's not as easy as it looks. Professor Robin's going to keep track of how long they last, and it's not long before our guinea pigs start dropping like flies. You're done. That's good, Saran. These are the last two. <laughs> Oh. Stage two, laughter. Our classroom comic making our guinea pigs giggle to increase their endorphin rush. Stage three, more pain. Go! Let's see how long they last this time after a belly full of laughter. Is the comedy doing anything different to their muscles at all? Uh, the comedy is just making them laugh and that's triggering an endorphin response. Nothing about their leg muscles has got stronger. It's no. just they feel the pain less. Yes. So pain is in the brain. Pain is in the brain. Don't give up! <laughs> that's good, that's good. Oh, bravo, well done. Now sit back, lean back. Oh! Yes! Yes! We have a winner! Are you ready? Time to look at the results and see if laughter made them last longer. Ta-da! This table shows how long our guinea pigs lasted before the comedy and after. The ones in red are the longest times. So what we can see is that almost everyone except three people got better the second time. Even though you're a bit more tired, you almost all got better the second time. Why do you think that is? Um, I think that um, it distracted us. We were thinking about the laughter, so we weren't really thinking about how much it hurt. So Weida and Daisy are spot on. Our second test showed our guinea pigs didn't feel as much pain. They lasted longer due to the endorphin rush released by laughter. If there's one thing we've learned today is the power of jokes can really help you not feel pain. So I've got a bit of a joke for you, OK? Two television aerials meet on a roof and they fall in love and decide to get married. The ceremony wasn't great, but the reception was amazing. <laughs> what? I don't understand. Dr. Chris's favourite joke. No, it's not, Zond. That was rubbish. Ouch. All hospitals try and reduce stress, but this particular hospital calls on the services of a very special expert to do that. Someone with lots of blonde hair, bad breath and a wet nose. Meet Golden Retriever Nala. She's worked as a pet therapy dog for 14 years and is known at this hospital as Dr. Dog. <laughs> Animal therapy dogs like Nala need to be calm, obedient and really intelligent. Not any old mutt can make the cut. 
Two of Nala's biggest fans are Spike and his sister Poppy. Spike has been in and out of hospital for most of his life. He and Nala have become good friends. What's your favourite bit of Nala to stroke? I've got two. Go for it. My, her ears and her tummy. And her tummy. How does it make you feel when you see Nala? Uh, happy. And Poppy, how do you feel? Because you come into hospital a lot to see your younger brother. Yeah, I think Nala helps you relax. Nala, do you feel happy when you see Spike? Yes! <laughs> Nala makes new friends every day. Harvey has just popped in for a checkup. While you've been with Nala, have you been agonising about your appointment? I've just been thinking about the dog, really. <laughs> Dogs are, like, really cuddly, and they just look really cute. Once you've petted her, we ask everyone to spray their hands. Nala has a bottle of germ-busting gel attached to her collar. Do you know why that's important? You might like get germs if you put your hand in your mouth. So you've got to wash your hands. That is exactly right. There's no doubt that this professional pooch can put a smile on your face, but can Nala really have a physical effect on a patient's health? Well, let's put Dr Dog to the test. <laughs> to help me, here's Miracle, who's in hospital having kidney dialysis treatment. Can you explain to me how it all works? The machine can clean my blood. So the machine is taking the place of your kidneys, is that right? Mm -hmm. So what I want to do is, while you're having your dialysis, I want to measure your blood pressure. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to bring in Nala the dog mm -hmm. and we're going to see what happens to your blood pressure. Mm -hmm. A blood pressure test is a simple way to check if a patient is stressed. Being stressed out can lead to high blood pressure, okay. which means that your heart is under extra strain. So, Miracle, at the moment, your blood pressure is 116 over 67. Those numbers mean Miracle's blood pressure is already within the normal range. But let's see if Nala can make Miracle even more relaxed. After a few minutes of stroking our happy hound, we take Miracle's blood pressure again. So, Miracle, your, your blood pressure has gone from 116 over 67 to 105 over 59. So although it's still within the normal range, her blood pressure has gone down, meaning Miracle is more relaxed and less stressed. The science is clear. Not only does Nala make people smile, she also physically improves a patient's health. For me, that is totally amazing that we can bring an animal in and just through affecting Miracle's mood, we can have a really big effect. Now, stress over a long time can be bad for your body, but dogs like Nala are amazing at relieving it. So every single person she's met today, including me, has had a little boost. I feel very relaxed. Thank you, Nala. Ouch. Come on, temperature, temperature. I need my temperature. Zan, what are you doing? I'm trying to get this little car to take my temperature. I can see that, but why? Haven't you heard? There's this whole new system. Patients are using Formula One car technology to monitor their vital signs. Yes, Zan, I have heard of this. And it is true, patients are getting their vital signs monitored by Formula One race car technology. But this is obviously not how it works. You're right! I need a real car. Sounds like a case for investigation, ouch! It seems totally bizarre that taking a patient's vital signs could be helped by a car. So I'm heading off in the fast lane to meet the motors. And I'm starting with a pit stop on the wards to meet Matt, who's just had a heart operation. You've got a lot of different monitoring going on here at the moment. Can we see how many wires are on your chest? Matt is wired up to a monitor to check his vital signs. Vital signs are important bits of information about a patient, such as oxygen levels and heart rate. Are you allowed to unplug yourself at all? What I have to do is I have to get my nurse. They uh, will take this off. Doctors and nurses write down Matt's vitals by hand on a chart. This system's time-consuming for the staff and, more importantly, uncomfortable for Matt. So, at the moment, for you, basically, leaving the bed is a real hassle. Yeah. Chris, this is where the cars come in. <laughs> In Formula One, monitoring systems have gone up a gear. This is Dr Adam Hill. He's the chief medical officer at McLaren and works out how Formula One technology can be used in hospitals. What a cool job. So how much is a Formula One car like a human being? Well, Formula One cars are incredibly complex devices. They have an engine, a bit like our heart. 
they have a need to breathe, a bit like our lungs, and they're incredibly intelligent. Oh, just like me, and the healthier the car, the faster it goes. So just like a patient, its vital signs are monitored. We use little gadgets like this that collect information at up to 960,000 times every single second from a single sensor. Wow, that is amazing. The F1 system is wireless, efficient and fast. If only the hospital had something like this. Well, Dr Adam has worked with Birmingham Children's Hospital to create a new system. It's a world first. It's brand new and I'm going to try it out. Alex, that, that's yes, it now. That's it now. It's flashing. It's flashing. It's, it's sending the signal to the monitor. Yeah. It has one sensor doing the same job as the six that Matt is hooked up to. The results are instantly available on the computer monitor. Bye-bye charts. Plus, it's wireless. I can walk anywhere, even do a few press-ups if I like. You're doing very well, Chris. All this time, it's recording my vital signs. Perfect. And then I can download my results when I get back. Even though I was jumping at the other end of the hospital, the computer knows what I've been up to. Well, the hope is that children will be able to go home with this system and they will be able to take one of these tablets with them so we can log on from the hospital and see what's happening in their, ha in their homes. This would be life-changing for patients like Matt. How much easier would you find it if you could just wear that new monitor? A lot. Seriously, I would lose a lot of these wires. It's small, compact, and that monitor takes 60 seconds to uh, monitor your heart. The other one monitors it every second. And I think it'll be great for the future. Okay. And then hopefully other kids uh, will find it a lot easier in hospital. Thanks, Matt. Who would have thought that hospitals can learn stuff from a car?